is heat. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I, I could not want to get it. Okay. Uh, and oh, and then he says to me, I'm out in the yard because there's a lamb wet in the Watch out for the little snakes. I like it. Okay. Now the thing is, I, that's from a video. Mm -hmm. I got it on freeze. Okay. That will hold, or will that give up eventually? Do you know? It it, it should hold. That's what I'm saying. It should hold. Okay. I like it. I mean, it just works for what you know. You know, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate your help. Oh yeah, and I, I quickly got out of that car and when I came out of the house it was nighttime. And I was thinking, wow, if there's something working here, I'm in trouble. I man, I was very quick to the car, that's for sure. <laughs> So are we live right now at yeah, the we event? Are live. Have you asked uh, uh, DJ 66, aka Bobby Diamonds, uh, anything? Uh, no, I haven't. Anything so, pertinent or relevant? Not yet. We just went live. Glad to be just, here with at the uh, Maryland Paranormal Conference. It's been a long day, but it's going to get great in just a few moments when Bill goes on and talks to this great crowd and have interesting people. Um, he's the main attraction today here. Going well. And it's been really great. I've enjoyed being here. And I want to thank both Bob and you for being here with me. I truly appreciate it. And uh, it's been a wonderful time. We've met some great people. Very much looking forward to getting up and speaking to the audience. And uh, we'll just let God be God. All right. So we'll see you in about five minutes or so, all right, Bill? I'm ready. So that's Bill Bean, Bob Sigmund. We're about to go live here shortly. I'm going to go over here and set up the the live feed so everybody can watch as he gets up and speaks to the audience. Hang tight. His, that's my camera feed. This is live right now. This will be capturing him for his spiritual warrior audience. And um, I'll be set right here. Okay, I'll be set right here. Mike's already set up. So you're good. good. You're fine. I'm just doing a little quickie introduction. Hello again. It's uh, 3.15, we're staying right on time. I hope you, everyone appreciates that. I, I know uh, when I attended a lot of different conferences, it used to drive me crazy when they weren't on time. So that's a big deal with me. Anyway, our next speaker is uh, Bill Bean. Uh, I don't have any speaker listed as a featured speaking, speaker or, or a keynote. There's a reason for that. Because some of you might have come to see Bill. Some of you might have come to see Rob. Some of you might have come to see Pat. They would be the featured speaker for you. But if I had to pick a featured speaker based on who's been on television the most, who's been on radio the most, who's appeared at the most places, it would be our next speaker. Matter of fact, that he has such a busy schedule, uh, we really, uh, really begged him to join us, and he jumped at the chance, and I really appreciate that. On top of it, I'm afraid Bill is usually uh, a little more expensive than our budget would have been. He, uh, he would have broke our budget, but because he thought this was important to have an event like this, and uh, it's always good to network and make connections, and please do that, and that helped get him today to be here. So I'd like you to welcome Bill Bean. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, it's my honor and pleasure to be here. And 
Uh, I want to thank Ed and Peter and the ladies for their great work and for having the event. And let's have a round of applause for them. <laughs> and he's right. I did feel like it was important for me to be here today. Uh, I always enjoy speaking, especially uh, when I could speak about overcoming. And that's what my whole life is about. Uh, triumph over tragedy and as long as I have a breath in my body I will always speak about that and I can never thank God and praise God enough for what he's done for me and for what he continues to do for me in my life I don't know how much you guys know about me some of you may have seen me on TV or heard me giving an interview or something like that I'm here to tell you I know what it's all about to suffer and to have some of the worst of the worst things that you can imagine in life happen. I take no glee in saying that, but my joy again comes from being in the position now to stand before you as a victor, not a victim. So, I've written three books, and in the first book, uh, which is called Dark Force, I talk about how these events took place uh, in my childhood. Now, in, in Dark Force, I said that it started in 1970 when my family and I moved into this house in Glen Burnie, Maryland, not too far away from here. But I found out after I had written the book that it goes much further back than that. I found out uh, that my mother had suffered many paranormal supernatural events and experiences in her childhood with her siblings. I found out that there were some family members many, many, many years ago that actually invoked and invited this evil to come in. And so that's where it really started. But that said, I believe that God had a plan for my life before I came into this world. And I feel that those, and, and let me say this, no person is better than another. We are all created equal, and God loves us all. But I find that those who have the greater callings in life, whatever that may be, suffer the most. So the way I look at this now, and I'm going to take you through all these events that took place, my conclusion on this, and I've said it many times, I could not be where I'm at right now in helping other people had I not been there. It was a necessary part of the journey. And make no mistake, we all have a journey in life. And I pray for each and every one of you that your journey turns out to be like my journey in having the triumph over tragedy and in overcoming. Now, I also want to thank all the speakers today, everybody that I've heard, very, very good, very interesting, and all had something to offer. And I've heard a couple things, a couple of the speakers uh, speak about frequencies and vibration and things of that nature. And I'm in total agreement with that. Now, God is first in my life. I didn't come here to preach a sermon, but I'm here to tell you that my life changed when I decided to make God first in my life. And it wasn't long after that that I feel God put a calling on my life to become a minister and help people. Who have suffered in a similar way but i'm also very very uh, aware that we as human beings we operate on frequency and vibration so when we are on high high frequency high vibration life is generally good we are moving forward doesn't mean we're perfect. Nobody has a perfect life. We all have a set of issues and challenges in life. However, 
if we are operating on that high frequency, high vibration, we are always going to make it through and God's always going to make a way for us. But when we're on low, low frequency, low vibration, and believe you me, I have been there, life is very, very difficult to say the least. There's always a problem, there's always a drama, there's always a situation. It's like the black cloud is over the person's head. And the devil is always in the details. So for me, based on my personal experiences in life, I have no doubt that there is a glorious God who created us, who created everything, and who loves us. I also have no doubt that there is an adversary to man that has minions with him that opposes God and tries to create as much misery for human, for human beings as possible. I wish what I'm saying was not true at all. But I think if each and every one of you takes some thought on this and takes some time to think about it and reflect on some of the things that may have happened in your life or to others that you know, I think you'll come into agreement with me that there is an external force out there that is really trying to create miseries for us and trying to keep us from moving forward in life. So I was four years old uh, moving into this house and the house was located at the bottom of a downhill cul-de-sac. Um, and even at the age of four, I could feel it. The house was semi-dilapidated. Uh, my dad, William Sr., was a master carpenter, so he saw it as a restoration project, which he did quite a bit of work to the house. I could just feel the presence of evil there. And it wasn't, uh, as I stated, that the evil was already upon the family due to the invocation by those family members many, many years ago. Yes, that's true. However, there was another evil force present as well due to the area. So this is why I feel it was so severe for us because these two uh, evil forces came together and we were in the middle of this perfect storm that greatly contributed to the destruction of my family. And I don't say that lightly. Uh, again, my dad, William Sr., was a master carpenter. He was a contractor. My mother, Patricia, was a homemaker. Um, they were married in 1956. My sister, Patty, was born in 57. There was another child born in 1963 that died under very mysterious circumstances. And that child only lived for a brief time. And to this day, I still cannot get the true story on what actually took place. And I was born in 1966, and my uh, brother was born in 69. But again, at age four, standing in front of that house, I could feel the evil coming from it. My sister was 13 at the time. And she too uh, felt like me that she could just, she knew something was wrong. You could just feel it. So it intensified when we entered in through the front door of the house. So you would go in through the front door into the living room, and the house was very dark. It had this dark brown paneling that almost looked black. So the house was always very dark, even on the brightest of days. And I don't know about you guys, if you've encountered evil or these negative forces, but if you have, you can feel the heaviness. So there's like an atmospheric change in the room. You can feel the heaviness in the air. You can feel um, just this, again, it's all frequency and vibration. And sometimes a person's ears will start to buzz or ring, um, and it feels like a pressure. 
And then accompanied with that can be awful smells. Uh, the smells of rotting meat or uh, rotten eggs or something like that. That's when we know these negative uh, presences are around. And so my mom was the first to have an experience. And it happened shortly after moving into the house. She was in the living room unpacking and organizing uh, boxes. My dad had taken us with him for the day to uh, his parents' house, my grandparents, to allow my mother what he thought would be peace and quiet while she organized without us under her feet. So it was during the course of this that she felt the presence come into the room. And she thought in her mind at first that it was my dad sneaking in to play a joke on her. And so she spun around fully anticipating on seeing him and to her shock, nothing was there. So she was perplexed, taken aback, unnerved, uh, and confused by the situation. But it wasn't long after that she was able to collect herself and go back to doing what she was doing. And not long after that, my sister's bedroom door slammed shut by itself, and that was enough to make her go outside and wait until we returned. So that's where it began, with the feeling of presence coming into the room, the door slamming, and then it escalated into uh, more noises and feelings of presence. There, there were times that um, they would tap on the wall or sometimes rap. And the house, so you'd come into the living room, and you'd make a right down a long hallway, which had uh, a tile floor, so it was a hard tile on the floor. And oftentimes, I would be laying in bed late at night, and I would hear footsteps coming down that hallway, like hard-soled shoes or combat boots or something, because it would reverberate off of the paneling, so you could hear it very loud and clear. Um, so as these things escalated, and, and the amount of events that took place if i were to list everything we'd be here all night long I mean, it's just unfathomable the amount of activity that took place in that house during that time period and it had gotten to the point that we were becoming desensitized to it you know we had experienced it so much that it was becoming commonplace for us, but that is what a demonic attack is all about. So it's all about divide and conquer. It is all about wearing the person down to the point to where they can't fight anymore. So if, if the person is worn down in mind, body, and spirit, then these demonic forces can really come in and either uh, present a severe oppression or a full out possession. And I have seen it, I have experienced it, and now uh, I praise God for working through me to take these things from other people. But, you know, going back to the house, I guess the most painful memory of the whole thing is the suffering of my mother. And she truly suffered more than any other person I've ever seen in my life. Uh, neither of my parents lived to see the age of 50. My mother died at the age of 44 from a cerebral hemorrhage, and my dad was shot to death at the age of 48. And um, a lot of my family, most of my family is gone. I have very little family left. But that would be the, the most painful thing, and it was very difficult for me to write this book. I have to tell you, and I, I really prayed about it, and I relied on God and ask God to help me to get through because when you're writing something like this you've got to put yourself back and relive all of those things again and talk about a challenge it, it was certainly a real challenge for me so but it was necessary no matter how painful something is if it is for the betterment of others then it's absolutely necessary. And that's the way I look at this now, um, that this is something that I was called to do. So, also in the house, and, and what happens with these demonic forces as well, goes back to what I just said about divide and conquer. So when a demonic force or present 
he is there. They will go to work on the person who may be in emotional turmoil, a person who's going through a rough time in life, a person who uh, may isolate themselves from the rest of the family, whatever it may be. And once they start that attack, then I call it a spiritual virus that just goes through the rest of the family. And before you know it, the family is in turmoil and chaos. And everybody's looking and saying, wait a minute, how did this happen? And it just all happened so fast. And certainly in my dad's case, uh, I want to say this, that I love my father very much. I forgive him for the things that he did. We're all guilty of something, so we all make mistakes in life. Um, I do believe that my dad was manipulated by these demonic forces. Um, now, he we all have free will. We're free to make our choices. So it's not the devil made me do it type of thing per se. However, when we make bad choices, there are consequences and the devil will be right there each and every time to aid and abed in these decisions. And so as these things were taking place with all the paranormal supernatural things that were going on in the house and with the family, my dad, who was a very rugged individual, he was a man's man, he was no-nonsense type of guy, he didn't want to address any of this stuff. He was used to being in control of everything in every situation and suddenly found himself in a situation that he couldn't control. So my personal opinion and belief on it is that he really started to escape reality and began to drink very heavily and became a raging alcoholic who physically abused my mother uh, on a regular basis between 1973 and 1975. He nearly killed her on several occasions. And I can recall being eight years old, having to run out of the house to a neighbor's to get the police call on my father. I mean, that's how horrific this was. I also have no doubt in my mind, based on what I witnessed, that these demonic forces were able to literally manipulate him while under the influence of alcohol and fuel his rage towards my mother. So it is quite miraculous that he didn't kill her. Um, I have seen it many times in the course of my life. I have also been there as well. When we are under the influence, and whether that is alcohol, a drug, whatever it may be, it lowers our frequency and vibration. And when our frequency and vibration is lowered, we are vulnerable to these types of attacks. So my whole thing now in being a spiritual warrior is I call it warrior mode. I have to be in warrior mode 24 seven. And that means I have to be strong in mind, body and spirit. And the only way that I can be strong in mind, body, and spirit is to walk in faith, strength, and courage. Doesn't mean I'm perfect or my life is perfect, but my life is very good. My life is very blessed, and I praise God for it. So my mentality is that certainly in knowing the truth, in being in the hard times and, and in suffering, um, we know that if God is with us, then nothing can stand against us. So my whole mentality now is uh, I take it so personally when people are suffering. I love people. There's nothing I wouldn't do for anybody. So in taking it personally like that, I have this, I guess, fury. That would probably be a good word for it. Uh, I have this intensity and this fury. So now I'm the guy running into the burning building when everybody's running out. And again, I cannot do this on my own accord. It is God working through me. But I have seen things um, that some of you, if, if I stood here and told you some of the things that I've seen and experienced, you probably wouldn't believe it. You'd probably think to yourselves, I, you would have to see it to believe it. But trust me, these things are real. These things exist. And if doorways are opened, for this garbage to come in, it only takes a little opening in the door, and then the devil and his minions will kick it in. 
And once they're in, it's going to require someone like me to come along to get them out of there. And again, I cannot do this and don't do this on my own. I don't claim to be anyone or anything. It is the power of God that is working through me to help these people. So uh, I had written the first book. I was contacted by a haunting about them featuring my story, which they did, and I'm very grateful to them for it. That's what put me on the map. And so the story, it, it was a wonderful thing in how it worked out to where they presented the story on the Discovery Channel, and now it's on Upteen Channel. But I was able to write the book in the same time frame. So we know how TV works. They take certain liberties, and it's not always entirely accurate in the presentation. But the great thing about it was that I had something here that I could present and say, okay, this book is written to the best of my recollections and family members' recollections. So any liberties that were taken or any changes that were made in the A Haunting um, presentation or episode, I was able to present it as it really happened. So after that, I started getting contacted from people uh, from all over the world. And some of these people were in great need and they were asking me for help. And at that point in time, my only thoughts were that, hey, I'm free from this now. There is no way on this earth that I'm gonna roll my sleeves up and stick my neck out and help somebody else. I've suffered through all this. I'm not gonna, I can't help anybody else. But God kept putting it on me, on my spirit, every time, every morning, every morning when I would wake up, I would have this feeling that I needed to help people. Every night going to bed, it would come back on my spirit again that I needed to help people. But I thought to myself, how in the world could somebody like me help anybody? After the death of my mother, which was right after we had moved out of the house, uh, it came two months after the death of my grandmother, her mother. These were the two closest people to me in my life. My dad had ended up leaving the house in 1975, I was nine years old. <clears throat> he left home. So my mother and grandmother were the two closest people to me in my life at that time. And they were suddenly gone. I didn't have any more desire to live after that. I really didn't. And I went through a period in my life that I was so depressed and so withdrawn and just so defeated in every aspect of my life that I was praying for death. I wanted somebody to come up, just put a gun to my head and pull the trigger and be done. And I can also recall during that point in time of having to literally grow up on the streets. I was, I quit school in the eighth grade I lied about my age. I went to work for a construction company. I had to grow up very, very quickly. I was paying $40 a week, room and board, to live. I lived with my uh, grandfather at the time, was paying him $40 a week to live there. And I grew up with the worst of the worst people, and, and a lot of those people are dead or in prison right now. And I could have very easily have been there as well. So this is what I'm saying. No matter how bad it was for me, and the supernatural activity was continuing in my life as well, but I too, like my father, was trying to escape reality in the sense that I thought, okay, I'll project this tough guy image and I will drink, I'll do drugs, I'll hang out with this bad crowd, nothing's going to bother me. I'm going to just take these things that will make me just impenetrable and I will just totally ignore this and I tried that for a while and it didn't didn't work very well that's for sure and in my life I got so tired of being sick and tired and it didn't seem like death was coming for me as I wanted it to so I decided one day I had this epiphany that I was going to give this to God and so I just said one day, 
if you're really there, I give this to you. Uh, if you can help me and if you'll guide my life, then I'm going to change my life. And it was not an instant transformation. Um, I ended up, I worked in the bar business. I was a bar bouncer for 22 years. I could write books on that alone. Um, I've done a lot of things. And I've been in a lot of life-threatening situations as well. And through it all, God not only kept death from me, not only kept me safe, but then I started to realize that he very well may have a plan for my life. So I had this epiphany and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try this. And it was two steps forward, three steps backward. Because when we wanna change our, our life, it's very difficult to do. So God can work through me all day long to deliver people from evil. But if the person is not willing to make any changes, then guess what? It's going to come back. So I learned that, and it's through no fault of anyone, because I was there. You know, when we have these terrible things happen, we get in this fear-based, trauma-based way of thinking. And so, again, it lowers our frequency and lowers our vibration, and it gets to the point where we expect bad things to happen. I can recall waking up some days saying, boy, this day is going to suck. This is going to be a terrible day. Guess what? It would be a terrible day. I just invoked it. We have, and God has given this to us, we have power over our words and our actions. And sometimes we have to be careful of what words we say because they can literally be curse words and can literally invoke evil and negativity. So uh, what I tell my clients now is that we must have a mindset change. So Jesus said, in order to receive, you must believe. So I will say, hey, if you truly believe that God has sent me here and that God is truly working through me to take this from you, then it shall be so. And in that, God is doing his part, but you have to do your part as well. And that requires the mindset change of going from the victim mode into what I call warrior mode, into that faith strengthened courage. And if we can do that, then the person is not only free, but they will stay free and then they can help other people. So, it's been quite an interesting journey, to say the least. So the second book, which is called Delivered, um, I wrote about how the transformation started to take place, and it was not easy, believe you me. I can recall times um, as I was in my young adult years and making all these mistakes, I can recall times having to go and borrow $5 so I could get dinner, so I could get something to eat. That's how bad it was. Um, I would blow my money uh, on drinking and hanging out and, you know, just ridiculous things. And then here I am borrowing $5 just so I can have a meal. So you look back on some of these things and I just say, wow, God truly was with me through all of this. So also in Delivered, I wrote about some different experiences that began to happen. So we had all of the demonic, paranormal, supernatural activity that was taking place in the house and with the family. It continued uh, after leaving. It continued in my life. Um, but I thought when we first left, we left there and moved in. My mother had a new man in her life at that time. And we moved in with uh, into his house. And my brother and I didn't have any experiences there. And I thought that it was free from it. But it did come back into my life eventually. But in writing uh, Delivered, I wrote about experiences that started in the year 1995 with UFOs. I began to have all of these UFO sightings. And I was not seeking these things, believe me. They came to me. And I started seeing these lights in the sky. It was like this red light. I thought that uh, it was a helicopter. In my mind, I thought, okay, I'm under police surveillance, and this has to be a case of mistaken identity. And, and so that's how it started out. This light was 
with me as I was traveling to and from work. And I worked in the evenings. I was working at a bar. And, and I thought, okay, I don't know what this is, but you know, now I'm coming home three, four o'clock in the morning and this light is with me going back. So, I mean, can you guys imagine? And so I tell my wife this and she thinks that I'm going crazy until she starts seeing it with me. And then other people started seeing it as well. I've had as many as 50 people in a group with me that have seen these objects. Uh, I have been on the six o'clock news, the 10 o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news, and they have featured uh, some of the UFO footage that I've shot. So I wanna tell you guys this, in my opinion, based on my experiences, I believe that all of this phenomena is tied together. And, and a lot of people, they don't want that. They wanna try and keep everything separate but I have to say, based on my experiences, the sheer amount of experience I've had in my life with all these different things, they are surely all linked together. I don't have all the answers on it, but I'm telling you right now, I have no doubt that these things are linked together. I was telling Dr. Resta uh, a, a scripture from Psalm uh, talking about the chariots of God being 20,000. So people don't understand this. I don't understand it fully either, but I do believe this. For whatever reasons, I believe that our God does have the heavenly host or the angels, whatever you want to call them, perhaps they are operating some of these craft. And if that's true, then the devil and a third of the angels that were cast out of heaven, in my opinion, were cast out in those flying craft. They came down here, they took human women, produced a hybrid offspring of giants called the Nephilim, and then God caused a great flood, and some of them got out of here in those flying craft and then came back. Uh, I do believe that in the vastness of the universe, certainly it's possible that God created life elsewhere out there. You know, we don't know this. There's so much undiscovered. Our greatest and brightest minds don't even have these answers. And furthermore, I feel that if in fact what I'm saying is true and there are, are these external forces um, that are perhaps some of our black uh, shadow government agencies are piloting and back engineering some of these craft as well. So uh, I feel that it's a very real possibility for all these things um, to be true. I have people here with me right now that can testify and corroborate what I'm saying about some of these sightings. I did come under surveillance. I had these black copters over me all the time, black vans, my phones were tapped, you name it. I had all this crazy stuff going on. And, and during that period of time, from 1995 to, I would say, probably uh, the year 2000, I just I felt like I was just losing my mind. I was under so much stress and pressure because I couldn't understand what was going on. But it continued uh, from 1995 into 2008. And finally, after a period of time, and as my faith grew, I didn't worry about it anymore. And I found that when I stopped fearing what was going on, that's when it eased up. So fear, is the number one tool that the devil uses. If we can eliminate the fear, which is easier said than done, because look, if something were to happen here right now and a gigantic uh, boom happened or something, you know, you guys would be startled. But I can tell you this right now for sure. If such a thing happened or something manifested right here, I would leap right from where I'm at and literally attack it and I can only do that by the power of God that works through me. So what I'm saying to you is get into that warrior mode type of thinking to where we're walking in this faith, strength, and courage and eliminating the fear. Because if we eliminate the fear out of our lives, we are literally kicking the devil and his demons right in the teeth out. And if you want to live a good life in and on that high frequency and high vibration, I suggest 
you study a little bit about this advice and maybe apply it. So I'd like to take some questions from you and you can ask me anything. Uh, I've tried to be as brief as I possibly could because there's so much to talk about and I certainly don't want to take the time of the next speaker, that's for sure. So uh, feel free to ask me anything that you want to ask me. And, and another thing I want to say before we get to the questions is that uh, I want to thank Dr. Resta as well for all the times that he had me to come and speak over at UMBC. Um, he's a great friend, wonderful person, and I've enjoyed it. And uh, I'd like for you guys to give him a hand as well. So also before we start the questions, you know, some of you are probably thinking, well, how did he come from, you know, having all this crazy stuff happening to, you know, where I'm at now? And it goes back to what I started to say about having this calling on my spirit to where I would wake up in the morning and I felt like I was compelled to get into ministry and help people and then the same thing would happen at night. And I always felt unworthy because, you know, when you quit school in the eighth grade, you don't feel like a scholar. I can guarantee you that. And so I always felt very, very unworthy. I felt that there was nothing that I could accomplish in my life that would have a positive effect on anybody. But the stronger my faith grew and the more the fear diminished, then I was understanding that God really does work miracles because you people are looking at a walking, talking, living, breathing miracle from God. It is only by the power of God that I'm here doing what I'm doing now. So once I came to that realization that I could do better and be better and that I really did want to make a positive difference for others, I engaged in three years of study <laughs> of the Bible and all of the historical books and you name it, I studied it. And I praise God for blessing me with wisdom and knowledge far beyond anything that I could ever imagine in my life. So God does make the impossible possible. So once I had the knowledge, I already had the faith, but I needed the knowledge to give me that assurance that I really could go out and help people make a difference. And once I had that, then I had the confidence. And so people, to this day, people see me on TV, they visit my website, and then next thing you know, I'm on a plane flying somewhere to help somebody. I have been all over this country several times over. Uh, I have helped people worldwide, and I will continue to do so as long as I'm on this earth and there's a breath in my body. So I forever praise God and thank him for working through me in this way. And if any of you should ever have a problem, which I pray you don't, and I pray for each and every one of you that you have a wonderful and blessed life and never any of this kind of garbage. But if you do, you can get in contact with me and I will stand for you. So uh, are there any questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, just, I'm not an expert in this type of field with uh, the things you're talking about. And, uh -huh. Yeah, and that's a great question, but here's the beautiful thing about how God works for me to do this. Even if it's a situation like that, I will adjust accordingly to that situation. So I'm just not a guy going in, you know, God working through me to expel demons. I can adjust to whatever situation. There's times I've gone in as a life coach or times I've gone in because a marriage was falling apart and God worked through me to bring the people back together. So it's, it's a variety of things. And I rely, you know, in my faith and on my faith in God to guide me and how he will guide me per the situation. But that's a great question. Go ahead. Yeah, you, um, again, talking about uh, UFOs, can you say a few more words about that? Is it something that you, you've uh, followed since daytime? Or 
Oh yeah, daytime, nighttime. Uh, I started to videotape these things. I, um, when it first started, which I believe it was somewhere in 1990, January 1995, and then it was in October of 95, October 5th, 1995 to be exact, that I took my first photograph of a UFO. Now, interestingly enough, October 5th, 1981 is when my mother left this earth. And so October 5th of, uh, of 1995 was the first photograph that I took of a UFO. And then um, I started to, they would just come. I wasn't seeking this. They would just come, I'd start photographing. Then I got a, a video camcorder thing, started recording them. I could, it was so crazy that I could put the, the video recorder on a tripod in my backyard, just point it to the sky, and these things would come. And I don't care if it was daylight, nighttime, it didn't matter. And then the copters would come with it. And as bizarre as it sounds, I say before God, it is true. That's exactly what happened. Well, it's okay. You, you first, then okay. you. Well, don't you feel, um, with the copters coming with the UFOs, that the government definitely is involved? Yeah. You know, I, and they are involved. Don't you think for, don't you think that maybe back in Eisenhower's day, when he did the Majestic 12 and all this stuff, that they made a pact? I believe that, but I also believe that it's more of a, I don't think the entire government knows about it. So I think that it is a part of a clandestine or shadow type of thing, it's still a covert op. Right. And I think, you know, a lot of people in government have no clue. And if they heard us talking like this, they go, these people are crazy. I don't know what they're talking about here. Special they know who they are and they know what they're doing, they're absolutely. Yeah. I believe it. I could certainly believe it. Now, I don't have privy to that type of information, so I don't know it to be 100% true, but I can believe it, and I've studied about it. And I will say this, uh, I had an experience, and I don't want to go too far. Well, okay. Um, I was taken somewhere else sometime. I'll put it to you like that. And uh, so I do believe that these things uh, do happen, and it's true. Go ahead, sir. I have a question about uh, when you're handling a demonic situation. Yeah. How are you, as far as afterwards, with any repercussions from it? Zero. And I'll tell you why. Because of the power of God. So I go into that thing in a fury, and I come out. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not drained or I'm not tired, because it is very draining, especially if you spend all night with somebody, and the power of God's working through you. I'm absolutely drained. However, never, and I praise God for this, I will never be a victim again to anyone or anything and so I have to keep that fury up, even if I'm drained. I say two prayers, and if you visit my website, BillBean.net, those prayers are on there. I say two prayers every day and or night of my life, and one is a daily declaration of victory. I declare victory in each and every day of my life, and will do so for the rest of my life. And secondly, I say a spiritual warfare prayer. And if you guys want to see them, visit BillBean.net. It's under powerful prayers. Thank you so much, guys. Right. God bless all of you. And of course, if you have more questions, uh, he'll, he'll be in the back. Just want to remind everybody about the surveys that were uh, given to you to please fill those out. Let us know what we did good, what we did bad. Uh, the, officially, the, we're out of here. Uh, it's over at 530 uh, you know, after our last speaker. But the vendors, if they if you want a reading right at 5:30 or so, they can remain till six if they have a customer. So if you want to sign up for anything or hook up with them right towards the end. And lastly, uh, after our last speaker here, we'll do the raffle immediately then too. Okay. So right now we got another 10 10 minute break. Last break. Bill just got off the podium. 
Uh, I just want to thank everybody who, who tuned in and have been tuning in. I'm going to direct it back to Bill here in a, mo in a moment here while he is still communicating with people after the presentation. Uh, people still have questions. People still have questions. Hang tight. So cool. How you guys doing? Good. As you can see, he's signing books. Uh, 20 minutes. Thank you very Thank you, much. My dear. God bless you. And look, keep in touch with me. Oh, I definitely will. We would be calling you next Saturday. Yes. What time will you have any we idea? We expect to be at the house about 1 2 o'clock in the afternoon. All right. Please, if you will, send me a text or an we email before that to remind me. I will. I will send you a text by Friday so you have it. Thank right. you. Thanks, guys. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the life coach? Okay, so. Okay. Well, it varies. And what I do is, and believe me, I'll be as cheap as I possibly can with you since you're here locally. That's usually what happens. Oh, yes. Now, here's the amazing thing. I'm going to be in Atlanta on the 19th. I'm going to be in Atlanta on the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. Help a client. I, so when I go to an area, I'm nonstop traveling. My schedule, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, people are, so many are calling me for help from everywhere. And when I go to an area, it always ends up being like three, four, five, six, sometimes ten different people that I'm helping in an area. So I, it, this could work. Uh, I'm going to be in Marietta. I'm going to be, what's, what's the name of it? Smyrna? Yeah, I'm going to be there. Uh, and I'm also going to be in the Buckhead area. So there you go. Your son is right there in the area? Yes, he's like right north of Marietta. All right, I want you to, here's my card. I want you to either send me an email. What I'll do, yeah, please send me an email. You can email me from the site. I'm going to forward that to my assistant, Melinda. Please include your number, and I'll have Melinda to call you back and then she sets all my appointments so we will set this up praise god i am so glad you came over here friends and friends and the girl rocks and the girl rocks which one did you want i think i know I'm to capture that while you do that. Yeah. Oh, seriously? Wow. So where do you live now? Okay. So you commuted from, um, is it Calvert you said? I'm getting goosebumps right now. I like this. So how long the trip is that? Okay, not too, not too, too bad. Well, thanks, thanks for coming. I mean, can't wait for the next thing. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, so we, we want to inform everybody, as many people as we can. So uh, he's getting numbers and, you know, take his car, use it, you know, get on his website. Whatever it takes to stay, whatever it takes to stay in, in constant communication with us, we do a lot of television stuff, we do a lot of Skype stuff, uh, so, you know, just try to, as best you can, you know, during everybody's got busy lives, so, you know, to take time off and stuff like this, we, we really appreciate it. So. All right, I gotta come around here and give you a hug now. Here he comes. And you know what? I want to rejoice and be glad, and you know, that God is Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I have some questions. Well, I hope I have answers to your questions. I'm I might make to the wall. And Yeah, you look very good. And we heard the cops. And he went and he opened the door. And he saw the stuff coming down. I worked for a company called the Adam Drywall. That was in Glenburn. One of the uh, plastic uh, dividers. Delivery uh, really which one didn't I work at? I, I uh, in this area, I worked with uh, um, Navardas. Well, I could. 
I'm sure Early nineties. Yeah, I was there from like eighty six to eighty nine. Because of my Oh, I was like okay. there. Well, my, my fiance is all about pets too. I was also in the book too. Really so you know. probably she she saw that. me there. Still knew her. Yeah. 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 I was the head of security at Anime. Yeah, the no. Oh, the other bar. Yeah, but I was never enemy with you. <laughs> okay. Never. My, no. I know. I mean, dogs, dogs. That's probably right right what it was. Yeah. 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 My last name. And always, I 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 you look when I saw you, I saw when I saw you, I said I know you, I couldn't replace it. But I yeah, yeah. I saw so. you. Okay, I'm gonna let you have this one. Grew up with it. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. I'm gonna come back and get you. All right, you got it. Stop. Yeah. I'm fascinated with the UFO. Okay. Aspect. Okay. Um, I mean, I was in aircraft control when we retired. So you have some stories to tell. But uh, we do have someone who is pretty high up in the air traffic world who, who has, I guess they say, a UFO. Like an ufologist uh, or Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of interested in what you know, aspect of it. There's so many some different kind of aspects. A reveal, you know, or, or with you or, oh, I've, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had... Bob right here has been with me, on, and he has seen things, and like with the helicopter. Did you enjoy the that, presentation, he sir? He tell you, and, and I've had 50 people Did you enjoy? in a good movie that I've seen. Yeah, we've seen well, Actually, just by coincidence, Bill has done a big military close black cop with uh, no granddaughters. granddaughters. No I was in Florida. At all. Oh, does he know this already? And yeah, yeah, he, he did. He's already done it. Oh, well, I mean, and my, and and I know it yeah, we, we, you're familiar. Really okay, I'm just making sure. I was about to say that he's going to be and really. No, so just by coincidence, we showed up I here. I need you when you. Oh, okay. Wow. Airspace, yeah, he's, he's, he's just a fabulous person. I mean, I tell you, just some of the things that the, the, the power that he has to, to heal people is just amazing. We're also appreciative. No argument for me. No, I mean, I, I'm telling, I've experienced it myself, so I'm speaking from my own personal experience. So it's, okay. it's something, it really is. It's tough to do the business thing in it. As you see, I'm always running my mouth. <laughs> So we'll be back with Bill shortly here. The next speaker has to get up there. I'm going to have to wrap up my equipment. Stay tuned, everybody. I'm wrapping up, okay? Those were the days, right? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I think 
come on the audio there. Oh, yeah. Oh, audio would have picked it up. Oh. That's a pretty sensitive mic, but I think we'll be all right. We'll it was it was good. He uh he can Phil can go on forever. Oh oh yeah. I mean he did he didn't even really scratch the surface. Oh I know. So. He really did too. I got it. I'm trying to keep it off everybody. I can't turn it off yet because we're not done. It'll it'll just continue to feed. But yeah, that's it. Once I uh. Once I move this uh, tripod, that's it. I'm out the way. And thank you so much for allowing this. Oh, I, I, you know. As long as he allowed it. Yeah. He, he was, it's uh, not like you were trying to record everybody. No, 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 no. I, the, only, the only people that are popping in, the, they seem to just want to be in there. Because, I mean, it's Bill. So, it's kind of like, yay. But, um. Come back and grab that in just a second. Excuse me. It has 30 So when those types of things are present, God says, do not bring a cursed thing into your home unless you be cursed like it. That is a cursed object. And when you are using something like that, you might as well take that door and open it wide and say, come on in. Because it's inviting a Almost done wrapping up. A couple more items and we can get back to Bill. That's it. I also better grab my charger. Oh man, I go crazy. Believe me, I've left it places before. <laughs> Hang in there, folks. Yeah. Hang in there, folks. We'll get back to Bill Bean in just moments. Excuse me, sir. And fabulous job you've been doing all this, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I noticed that. It, it was helpful. Everything you were saying was very helpful. So I appreciate it. All right, yes, yeah, so that's that time, and I'm done. Let me put this chair back, and I'm out the way. Yes, it's that time again. Last, as they say, last but not Excuse me. Hi. All right, making my way back over to Bill. I want to thank everybody who's been watching. Hi. Really appreciate it. Say hi again. Hi, bye. <laughs> great people, great environment. Uh, it's been a blast. We've been having a great time all day. <laughs> Okay, Leslie, is it this one? Yes. Okay. Oh, you want these two? Well, there he is. He's doing what he does. Um, a lot of great people here uh, coming up talking to Bill. Sure, a lot of great people. Uh, he's still signing a lot of books. Uh, the next speaker is about to come up. Look, guys, we're going to get off here. We'll touch base with all of you later. Thank you so much for watching this. Take care. <laughs>
this year's 2017 Maryland Paranormal Convention. I'm sitting here with the spiritual warrior Bill Bean who was one amongst many great speakers uh, today at this convention. And now uh, I'm going to turn it over to Bill just to tell everybody about um, how it went and uh, what kind of fabulous time we all had listening to everybody's uh, phenomenal stories. Bill? Well, thank you, Derek. And it was great. I enjoyed every bit of it. Everybody was awesome. The speakers were awesome. Uh, Ed and Peter, fantastic above and beyond. Uh, it was great to see some old friends, and it was absolutely uh, a blessing and a joy to be here and, and look forward to next year. Yeah, I had a great time. Um, I sat there and watched you uh, do your thing, man. And Thank you, As many times as I've seen it in the past, it, it never goes old uh, or never gets old. Um, his story, Bill's story, is, is one that is incredible. What he does for people uh, all over the country, even the world in some cases is incredible. Uh, love spending time with them. Um, get ready for next year's 2018 uh, very, Maryland Paranormal very Convention. Very much looking forward to it and uh, you know I want to thank all of you out there for watching and for following Derek and, and uh, stay tuned for the Speak Your Mind TV show and I want y'all to tune into that because this guy is top-notch and I'm just uh, thankful and blessed and fortunate to continue to do what I'm doing and uh, I've got a lot of great things coming up in the future and to everybody out there I say God bless all of you wish you all the best have a great rest of the weekend and I'm certain that I'll see you somewhere sometime in the future there thank you my brother thanks Bill Bean and to the rest of you guys out there, stay tuned to the next convention.